Okay, great. Um, Sorry, go ahead. Would you like me to go ahead and start sharing my screen? Yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, how is everybody? I am <laughs> so nervous because I am just a nervous speaker. I get I get very um, like worried that I'm gonna stumble over my words and I've taken several speech classes and none of them have really helped me, but <laughs> so just bear with me if I'm if I'm um, nervous or if I seem nervous, I am. Um, my name is Sarah McGlory. I am a recovering perfectionist. The reason I came up with adaptive cleaning, um, I'll just tell you like a, try to be brief about my backstory, but I think it kind of helps in knowing where I'm coming from because I personally used to look to cleaning videos and cleaning gurus to teach me how to do stuff. And I quickly found out that we were not playing on the same field. Like they had a ton of energy. They had perfect homes. They had, you know, all the time in the world to, to do the different things. And so I don't, for me, I think it's important to learn a skill from someone who does not know how to do it naturally and who, you know, has had to kind of struggle with it. So basically I'm just sharing my struggles so that, you know, that these tips come from, um, a lot of trial and error and and so anyway so in 2020 when the pandemic happened we had uh we had a family of five i had three kids um and then someone in our family was going through some pretty serious mental health crises and you know drug abuse stuff and um her, she had left her kids so we we brought them to our house um they were two and four and we ended up, uh, then she was pregnant at that time, which no one knew. And then she had her baby and asked if we'd come get her baby. So we ended up with her um, three children. And we started the adoption process because she that, that was the step she wanted to take with us. And meanwhile, it is the pandemic. We're not leaving the house. Um, I'm homeschooling two children. I'm not a good teacher. Um, and then there's a baby and I'm not sleeping. And I have, um, I have several autoimmune diseases. I have fibromyalgia, I have psoriasis, psoriatic arthritis and ankylosing spondylitis. So as you know, if you have any kind of autoimmune issue, lack of sleep is the absolute worst thing that you want for your life. So anyway, the whole, um, the whole point of this is I was struggling worse than I'd ever struggled before. I've always really had a hard time keeping up with stuff. Um, I have ADHD and I just getting started, getting overwhelmed easily, um, thinking that I had to do everything. And then on top of that, I would just beat myself up about not continuing on. So that was the point I was at when I started adaptive cleaning, um, I had like a complete meltdown one day. And then that night I just was thinking to myself, why am I trying to do every single solitary thing? Why am I pretending that my physical body with all of these different things that it's fighting shouldn't rest? Like I should keep going and be consistent all the time. I'm just not, con I, I don't have consistent energy. I don't have consistent time. And so I started making myself a low capacity list of things that I could get done. Cause I'm a list maker. I, if I don't see it, it's hard for me to know how to go. Like that's kind of my navigation tool. So I, I put down like very bare minimum things that I could complete every day, like very bare minimum, like brush my teeth and without putting all the pressure on myself and without um, expecting myself to keep going, no matter how badly I felt, I actually started to become a lot more productive. It, it took, you know, weeks and then months. And I just started to see such a difference in my house and in my mental health. And um, so that's, that's kind of where it started. So I just uh, wanted to go there. And then now we'll just hop into strategies. So if you do not have consistent 
energy. If you're dealing with pain and things like that, you cannot keep up with every little thing. So I think it's important to have strategies so that you can focus on priorities and not burn yourself out. Because I know that a struggle that I've had in the past and many people that I've worked with have had is that they feel bad. Everything piles up. They think they have to do all of it at once. And so that makes them feel bad. And then when they finally start to feel better, they'll try to do too much and overwhelm themselves. So these are some strategies for just getting started, for not burning yourself out. Um, The first thing is to really understand what your priorities are versus possibilities. So everyone's priorities are different. They're cleaning priorities, I mean. Um, I really care about floors because I have dogs. I've always had a lot of dogs and I have a toddler. Um, So I have that on my priorities list, taking care of my floors. But people who don't have extra stuff like that going on, that wouldn't be on their priorities list. So I think that just thinking about a couple of things that are important to you to get done is very, very helpful. Um, Another one of my priorities is always getting the kitchen cleaned at the end of the night because my biggest phobia is roaches. I hate them so much. And um, so (laughs) I living in Texas where I, I come from, if you do not have every single speck of food picked up at all times, you are inviting roaches into your house. I I don't want that. So that's one of my priorities. And then um, I also have a list of possibilities, um, things that I could get done if I feel like it's not going to burn me out. And I think just taking the time to ask yourself, what really bothers me when it's not done? Um, What do I need to do to keep the function of my house going? For instance, like it would be great to have um, an organized laundry room, but that's not that's not an essential thing. You need clean clothes, you need clean towels and things like that. So it's just kind of separating what you really need to get done versus things that you can just dismiss if it's not within your accessibility that day. Another strategy is doing timed tidies. I know this has been around for a while, um, but I think that we get so overwhelmed by the visual stuff going on all around us that it causes many of us to shut down that that's a classic thing for many people that I talk to and if you instead of evaluating the whole house if you just put on a timer and think I'm gonna just do this one thing Mm -hmm. um you'd be really really surprised by what you could get done and the benefit of it is your brain doesn't resist the cleaning so much because it knows there is an end in sight. I will say, if you're going to use the timer method, there are people, I've heard this a lot where they say, I I use the timer method to trick myself to just get going. And then once I start going, I'm usually good and I'll just keep cleaning. I used to do that. I think that that is great for a lot of people, but it is not great for me anymore now that I have to really carefully guard my physicality. So now when the timer goes off, unless I need to do just like one or two extra little things that'll only cost me a couple of minutes, I stop. I stop mid project. I stop mid folding clothes. I stop. And then that in turn has taught my brain to, to trust myself, to, to realize, Oh, okay. Cleaning isn't going to be that that big of a deal. She said, we're setting a timer and we'll stop when we're done. And that's what she always does. And it just kind of removes the resistance from your brain. And that's, to me, I think a lot of getting started is about removing that resistance. So that's definitely been a powerful tool for me. Um, another strategy is having a tunnel vision. Um, which kind of goes along with the time tidy. But if you come into your kitchen and everything is crazy, I think it's very good to just choose with your tunnel vision one thing to do, or if you're in your room, 
no matter where it is. You pick one single thing to work on and then you can add this with your timer. And then if you get finished before your time timer is done, then you can move on to the next thing. But trying to do a whole entire room is daunting. Definitely, especially if there is a lot of clutter, or a lot of buildup, um, a lot of tasks that need to be done. So I definitely use that. Another strategy is couch care. This is something that I came up with because there are days when I, I'm not leaving the couch very much. I, if I have a flare or, you know, just going through a lot of depression or something like that, I will be on the couch. And this used to really bother me, but A, I've done mindset work to realize that oh, you absolutely should spend time relaxing and resting and doing things like that. That's important um, and not something to be like guilty about. But then I also realized there are a lot of things that I don't, um, I didn't really see as important that I could be doing on the couch. So those are things like paying bills, um, decluttering my email box, I uh, menu planning and ordering groceries and all of that kind of stuff. Um, that has really helped me because when I am having a super low energy day, I still feel like I am, uh, continuing momentum. If I can do these things while still honoring the fact that my body needs to rest. So, um, that has been really cool. Uh, distracting the dread is a strategy. <laughs> I hate cleaning. I think I will always hate cleaning. I think it's so boring. It takes forever. And so a strategy that really helps me is I put my little headphones on and I put on a comfort show. I love to watch The Office or just, you know, there are various little shows that I like to watch that I've seen them before. I don't, it's not going to distract me from what I'm doing. I can kind of listen to it and chuckle along, but still, you know, stay busy. Um, watching watching movies, listening to podcasts or audiobooks, uh, calling a friend on the phone and just, you know, having that conversation, especially if you have headphones or um, AirPods or whatever, then it kind of just makes the time go by. It, it kind of distracts that little bit of your brain that's like, I don't want to be doing this. So that's been um, helpful for me. And then the last strategy I wanted to talk about is the command center. Um, again, going back to like a super low capacity day, if you're not going to be moving around the house very much, there are still quite a few things that you can do. For instance, I, I do declutter fairly regularly, or I'll help my kids with their toys or I'll fold laundry. And I just, I set myself up in a certain spot, like usually the couch or, you know, I'll make kind of a nest where I'm fairly comfortable and then I'll have, you know, everything right beside me and I can sit there and talk to the kids or we can, you know, I can still engage while keeping my energy reserves and I'll just fold laundry or I'll, you know, sort through things or help them clean up their toys, things like that. Um, that's been super great for me. So move on to the next. Um, now I wanted to get into a couple of room shortcuts just to give you some like concrete ideas about uh, making things easier on yourself. So we're going to start in the kitchen. Um, I was very, very reluctant to use disposable paper plates and cutlery and things like that because I just felt very guilty. However, it helps enormously. Because, you know, especially with dinner, if I'm at the end of uh, the bandwidth that I have for that day, I really, I could either clean the kitchen or I could make a meal and I'd rather make a meal. So I keep disposable things in my pantry. I use them whenever I need to. I let go of that guilt. It's not mine to bear. And it, it just helps if at the end of the, the meal, everybody throws their stuff in the trash. I can wipe things down. And then that's, that's just about it. Um, another thing that I found that really uh, is a shortcut in the kitchen is using Ziploc bags instead of Tupperware um, to store your leftovers. So 
if I just throw things in a Ziploc bag on the front end, that doesn't really save you any time. It's just as easy to put it in a Ziploc, I mean, in a Tupperware. However, whenever you pull it out and you heat up your leftovers, you have the Ziploc bag, you throw it in the trash versus another thing for you to wash. Um, whenever I am cooking, I will use <laughs> parchment paper on my pans. Um, and then that really prevents me from having to clean the pans at the end. I use Dawn Power Wash for, um, I try, I try pretty hard to, to keep up with stuff, but there, there are times when pots and pans just get crusty. And so I'll just put Dawn Power, Dawn Power Wash all over it. And then it kind of just softens all of the crusted food, makes it a lot easier to clean. Um, I also keep cleaning wipes underneath my sink. I, this might sound silly, but to me, sometimes the act of having to pull out my spray and spray everything and then let it sit and get out my rag and wipe everything down and rinse it and wipe everything down and rinse it. It seems impossible on certain days. So I just have these wipes, then I can wipe everything down. The counters are clean. I'm not worried about bugs and it's just something to really help me. It just helps for me. Uh, running the dishwasher as often as you need to is another really good shortcut because a lot of people will wait until their dishwasher is completely full to run the dishwasher and then they're out of plates, they're out of cups, they're out of silverware. If you run it on a light wash, it actually, it doesn't use a lot of water at all. I was under the misconception that it did for a long time, so I was careful about when I ran my dishwasher. Not a problem now that I have a family of seven. <laughs> I almost need to run it twice a, day, twice a day, but it helps. I also keep a stool in the kitchen so that there are times when I'm doing quite a few dishes. And even if I'm feeling at more average capacity, it really can help me to just sit down. Just I've usually been up for a while anyway making dinner. So if I just sit on my stool, that's very helpful. All right, in the bathrooms, the first thing that I would say, maybe some of you already have this, um, but I didn't do this for a long time. I have a cleaning caddy at every single bathroom now. I used to have one cleaning caddy. It was in the primary bathroom. And then I would have to come to that bathroom and take it to go to the other bathrooms. Mm -hmm. This is not ideal for someone A, with ADHD, or B, with limited energy, because on my way from one bathroom to the primary to get the cleaning caddy, I get distracted by 25 things, <laughs> or just think, I, I don't actually have the energy to go to the other bathroom, I'll just do it later. But if you have a cleaning caddy in each and every bathroom, then when you see, like, there's, you know, your kid has squeezed to toothpaste everywhere, or you, you know, you just have that little fit of energy to wipe down the mirror. You can do it real quick. And these, these little things um, really contribute to making less work for you in the long run. In my cleaning caddy, I have a uh, disinfectant wipes. It's the same thing as the kitchen, although I, I think it actually helps in the bathroom a good bit more. But I take those disinfectant wipes. I wipe all the counters. I wipe the sinks, the faucets. And then it's done. I use the disinfectant wipes on the toilet, wipe all that done, it's done. Um, I also use the Clorox toilet wands. It's the kind where you have, you clip on the little scrubber and then when you're done, you clip it off. So, you know, it's not, I don't know, like the, uh, the um, like standard toilet thingies, those just gross me out for some reason. I just, the toilet wand helps. Um, Swiffer dusters, this is going to sound so odd, but if you're, you know how the bottom of the, the base of the toilet could get so gross. And if you use, I use the uh, six foot extendable Swiffer. Um, and if you use it, it gets all of the stuff around the base of your toilet all cleaned up. Mm -hmm. And it also you don't have to bend down because it extends so far and it's very flexible. The handle is like that. So it'll get in all the little nooks and crannies and it will clean all that up for you. Um, that's very, very helpful. Um, I also, the Swiffer spray mop, I think is 
super easy to do that has um, the pads that you can just pull off and toss when they're done. As far as cleaning the shower and the bath, I have an electric scrubber. I just tested it out to see because I'd seen several people using them and it actually works pretty great. Mm. It's long enough that you're not um, bending down a lot or, you know, kind of kneeling down, which is what I'm usually doing to do the, the floors of the shower. It also has, some, well, not all of them, but I would look for one if you are interested that has a head that will, has a couple of different positions because that really helps get into the cracks. Um, oh, and using bins for categories. This is one of my very favorite things that I have implemented. We moved to our home here about five months ago. And as I was trying to decide how to set everything up, I happened to watch a video of this woman who said she put all of her toiletries in bins. And then I implemented the same thing. So I have a, an AM bin and a PM bin, and I just throw everything in there. And when it's time to use it, I put it on the counter, use all of my stuff. It's enormously helpful for one thing because I forget to apply face lotion, for instance, because it's not directly in front of my face, but if it's in my bin, I'm like, oh yeah, face lo So I've been keeping up with skincare for the first time in ages because I have it in a little, it's like maybe about a foot, maybe a little bit smaller. Um, and then I have one for PM, but the other benefit is if you're in a hurry and you leave everything out on the counter, you didn't put everything back. When it's time to clean up, you just toss everything back in the bin and put it away. So, so easy. I, I love that. Okay, laundry is a dreaded task for many. Um, I have found that the hamper, I have a picture of it over here that has the, the handle that'll pull out so you can drag it. And it has wheels is very helpful, especially if you have a lot of low capacity days. So if you need to, for instance, pick up laundry around the house, you can just drag it along and grab everything and take it to the laundry room. I have a stool in my laundry room also. And every time, so, so I will say that I typically will fold and hang clothes out of the dryer right away. Be this is just something that I need to do because we do so much laundry. If I start you know, putting <laughs> clean clothes here or there, the, it'll be a mountain. So I have a stool in my laundry room. I just sit right there, open up the dryer and I'll just fold stuff. And then I'll throw the hangups on the washer. And then when I'm done with all the fold ups, I go through and hang everything. It really helps. Um, I also use bins for fold ups, not for everybody, but, um, I was under this misconception that I needed to carefully fold all of the things like my yoga pants and like jammies. I, I don't need to do that. I can simply throw them in a bin. <laughs> Nobody cares. I can throw all the socks in a bin. They don't need to be matched. Uh, that's definitely been something uh, that I have loved, especially with my kids, because they're going to go through all of their clothes and make a giant mess anyway. So no big deal. <laughs> Um, I also, this is something, um, the little ballet hooks on the right, mm -hmm. if you do not want to, or you find that you're not hanging clothes up consistently, this is a pretty great option. You don't even have to put them on hangers like it is in the picture. You can just kind of put your shirts on there or loop, uh, especially pants, jeans and stuff like that on there. Um, any little thing to kind of make it easier for you to have clean clothes that are visible to you so that you're not going through the stress of looking through laundry baskets. And I definitely think having people make fun of like having the exercise bike, that's just a laundry thing. I honestly think if you need a chair or <laughs> an exercise <laughs> bike to throw your clean clothes, just so they don't, you know, fall down on the floor and then you you're like is this dirty is this clean it, it doesn't matter the point is to clothe yourself and to have things accessible to you the point is not to have you know a, an aesthetic closet or any of that stuff um I also want to say that I have 
so many times ruined clothes because they've mildewed in the washer because I forgot to transfer them over to the dryer. And I know I've, I've heard people tell me that they have, um, the newer washers and dryers have the app, which will like notify your phone if, if you're, um, <laughs> whenever the wash is done so that you can transfer it over. I don't have a newer washer and dryer right now. So I just, I like to set a timer. It's difficult to remember to do it first, but if you keep doing it, it will help. Okay, floors. Um, there is a difference between doing the main traffic areas versus very detailed cleaning. So you do not need to uh, move all the furniture and pick everything up off the floor in order to make a difference in your floors. I think that if you don't have a lot of time and energy, you simply go through and get the main traffic areas and don't worry about the rest. You can do detailed cleaning whenever you have the time. I have very often used this Swiffer. Um, this is the exact one that I use. It's for fans. Like if you look for it online, it'll mm -hmm. say it's for, for fans, but it is six feet. You can take it and you can get in a lot of corners with it and just kind of draw everything to the middle. Um, it's, you really don't even have to bend down that much. It's good for getting stuff out from underneath the couch. It's good for getting stuff from underneath the table. Anyway, you can just use that as a tool. And there are, um, reusable ones like this. I bought one recently that I really like. Um, the only thing that is not perfect about it is that the Swiffer has such a flexible, the little head for it is so flexible. Yeah. It really gets into crevices, but um, those are some options and you can, even if you're trying to clean your hard floors, especially you can just use that, pull everything to the middle and either use a, a dustpan to throw it in the trash, or you can, you know, pull out your vacuum at that point. Um, having a lightweight cordless vacuum is super helpful. Mm -hmm. uh, there's not much to say about that, but it, it does help. I had a very, very heavy vacuum for a long time. And I noticed that I just dreaded vacuuming. Um, and as I said before, that was, we used to have a German shepherd and those things shed like it's their professional job. So I had to find, you know, just get a cordless at some point because otherwise it just wasn't getting done. You can use the Swiffer spray mop for your hard floors. Those are super duper simple. Um, I don't love the Swiffer because I don't like the cleaning solution that you have to use with it. Um, I, I don't know. It just kind of gives me a headache, but I was looking online because I'm looking for something and I found this in the picture, but it has little um, cleaning solution tubes. You can put whatever you want in there. So I, I think I'm going to buy that, but I just wanted to show that as an option. And then another thing you can do, especially in smaller spaces like the bathroom, is you can, you know, just get your cleaning spray and, and spot clean. You just spray the little spots that need it, throw a damp rag or a towel on the ground and use your foot to, I've done this many times. I mean, it's, it's kind of funny looking, but it gets the job done. Um, I wanted to talk very briefly on decluttering. So I'm very, I've been very resistant to decluttering in the past. We grew up without a lot of money and I attach a lot of um, sentimentality to items, even items that I don't use or even really like. So I've, I've done some work on that, but also I have come to realize that the more belongings I have, the more work it is going to take to keep up with them. Um, I've also come to understand that decluttering is needs to be part of a routine. It is not a marathon that you have to complete, which is the way that I used to approach it. Um, I do this thing. Uh, I do a home reset thing where you kind of go through and you declutter different rooms. And I have never worked on it for longer than 30 or 45 minutes. Um, so I'll go through is just part of the routine and I'll get rid of some stuff and I won't push it. I won't try to force myself to, you know, mentally make decisions. It's just exhausting to force yourself to do that. Um, for every single thing that you have, I'll just 
the obvious stuff. I'll just get the obvious stuff and I'll declutter it. And since it's part of the routine, every time I go back through those rooms, I end up having less and less to declutter. And the stuff that I thought was a big deal last time that I had gone through the room that I was like, oh, I don't want to let it go. I'm like, eh, I can let that go. So I think that that's um, having it as a routine is very good. You can work by quadrant, as I show in this little picture. You don't have to look at your whole entire room. You can just say, I'm going to just do the side table or I'm going to work on my desk. You don't have to do everything at once. Um, if there are sentimental items that you're ready to release, I, I worked with this one woman and her mother passed away very suddenly and she brought all of her mother's items into her home and she already had too much. And she was having such a difficult time getting rid of the things that she knew for a fact she couldn't keep, she didn't want to keep, but they just meant so much to her. And so we made this plan that she would take pictures of the, of certain things that had a story or had a reminder that was special to her. And she would just write a little journal entry and keep that and make like a scrapbook. And so there are ways that you can go about um, keeping the memory while releasing the item. There are some things that you're not going to want to, um, you're not going to really want to get rid of. So in that case, I would definitely suggest not fighting it, just getting, keeping it all together, all of your keepsakes. I like the clear, there are these big, clear, heavy tubs at Costco. They're, they're everywhere, but they have little locking latches. So you can keep things that are sentimental, but the latch will prevent, you know, moisture and bugs getting in there. Um, and then once they're all together and assembled, they're not cluttering up your the space that you use often, you can store it somewhere that's out of the way and then you instantly have more space. Um, old electronics are annoying, but you can definitely go through and um, there's a ton of tutorials about removing all of your personal in information. And then you can take it to office supply stores. They will recycle those things for you. Finally, there are nonprofit pickups that you can you can search online just for um, just for something like charities in my area that will pick up my belongings. Like I know um, the Red Cross has has a place. Habitat for Humanity will do it in a lot of areas. But I got on a list for um, veterans assistance, and they would text me with regularity. Do you have anything to declutter? And because I had gone from so many things, like I have, I've done a lot of work in the past couple of years. I always was like, yes, I do. And so then having a date in mind also that they're going to come, that really helped me because I'm a procrastinator. So that's something that's very helpful. These are just a couple of things. Um, if you guys want the slides I can send, but I know that we're getting a little short on time. But I just, whenever I'm decluttering a space, I have like little, I have these little things. I always have a trash bag. I have a thing for donation. I have a box for stuff I'm not sure if I want to donate or keep. And then I have a box for stuff that doesn't belong in the room. I don't sell anything. I used to be the kind of person who thought, I could sell this and make money. I am not that person. I will never do it. I will never take the pictures. I will not list it. I will not meet you. I just stopped trying to expect that of myself. So these are just a couple of questions to ask if you're going through your decluttering. Um, papers and doom boxes. Um, if you don't know what a doom box is, um, it's just you know, if like companies coming over and you're like, wow, the living room is so messy and you throw everything into a box, that's a doom box. Um, so we'll, we'll do papers first. I have historically had a really big issue with papers. So if you do too, here are a couple of tips. You can consolidate your paper piles, first of all, because I know mine were all over the house. So I put everything together really evaluate what I really needed because a lot of things are online now. Um, 
for instance, you can get all of your medical stuff online now. They have the portals for your patient files. I've been to too many doctors. I will not remember all of those doctors and logins and patient portals. So I keep my medical stuff in hard form, in papers. Um, however, there are things like car insurance and benefits and stuff like that that is on the app. And I will remember what that app is. So I throw all those papers out. Um, I think it's very helpful to have a paper command center too. If you, um, if you struggle with knowing how to, or not knowing, but if you struggle with just having paper pile up, if you get yourself a little shredder, if you have, you know, one spot where papers, mail, et cetera, is constantly getting dropped, just make it, make a little spot there, maybe have a little box of files and then instead of doing detailed categories for your files, do very basic categories so that when it comes time to file your mail or file these different papers, you're not thinking, does it go in this category or does it go in that category? Like if it's extremely basic, it's a lot, you don't have to expend all of that brain energy. Um, and then if you have other people in the house that are also throwing papers, in spots, I think having everything labeled is very good to keep up that continuity. And um, this has nothing to do with cleaning, but I just thought I'm at low capacity a lot. You may be at low capacity a lot. So here are just a couple of ideas. I get so, I wake up exhausted typically. And then the last thing I want to do is feed myself. So what I was experiencing was I get to about four or five o'clock, realize I hadn't eaten. That's why I feel terrible. And then I would proceed to eat for the rest of the night, but it wouldn't be good choices because I was so hungry that like, I just would eat whatever. So I, I start doing this thing. Um, I have a very detailed blog post about this too, if you want to like, but I have a basic pantry box just has like a, a, a bunch of little items in there. So that if I cannot make myself something to eat, I can easily grab some peanut butter crackers or some nuts or, you know, something that will put food on my stomach and that I won't feel like I'm going to die at four o'clock in the afternoon because my blood sugar is so out of whack. I also have, um, when I know that it's kind of coming, I'll get a basic fridge box together too. That will have like cut fruit, um, It'll have, you know, I'll get one of those vegetable trays where everything's already washed. I keep protein drinks um, on hand. Those are great as well. I always have freezer meals available. That's just, you know, I can pop an Amy's meal in for five minutes into the microwave. And then I also don't have to wash dishes. Um, and then I also keep a lot of frozen fruit and vegetables on hand because, you know, if I miss my shopping day, uh, that I typically go get stuff. I'm just out of fruits and vegetables, fresh fruits and vegetables, and I try very hard to eat those. So, you know, just having things frozen on hand is helpful. I also wanted to include a personal care box because I, one of the things that I've had a lot of shame around is um, taking care of myself. Um, and so this kind of has removed that that uh, stumbling block because I don't know why I'm I, I have ideas but I really struggle with taking a daily shower I struggle you know if I'm depressed or if I'm at low capacity it is extremely difficult for me to do that and I'm probably not going to shower you know it might be every two or three days sorry but that's just that's just the way it is um, for me so if I have a little um, a little box of stuff um, here I have listed some ideas, but if I have these little, those little Colgate wisps, they have like the toothpaste in the middle and they also, the end of it has a little bit of a like thing that you can floss your teeth almost. Um, mm -hmm. those are great to have on hand, body wipes, um, makeup wipes, dry shampoo, things like that. And then the last thing is I want to encourage you to create a list of ways that people can help you. Um, I was speaking to 
I was working with this woman and she was saying that her mom had come over to help her when she was having a really bad flare and her mom didn't know where her, um, her dish soap was. She didn't know how to start her wash machine. She didn't know how, you know, where she kept different things where she, uh, could have helped her. So she made a list of ways that people could help her if they came over, where stuff was located, what she would prefer to be done. And then that, you know, has really helped her. And then I would say that mindset is absolutely key because for me, the longest time I did, I had such a horrible relationship with cleaning because I thought it was a personal, I, I was personally a um, lazy or undisciplined. And that's why my house looked the way it looked. That wasn't the reason I didn't feel good. I was exhausted. Um, so these are, I um, had created these. So like just shifting um, something like I'm in too much pain to clean anything. There were, these were thoughts that would come through my mind. So I would just make it instead a neutral statement. Pain mm -hmm. makes cleaning difficult, period. That doesn't, you know, that doesn't have the same power that I'm in too much pain to do anything has for me. So I've used neutral statements a lot to shape my mindset from the very negative um, things that I used to say to myself and things about my home and my capacity. Um, and then if you practice those neutral statements enough, then you end up with the ability to kind of move into more positive statements like, I respect my body for carrying on while in pain and I choose to support my body by working when I can and resting when I need to. That has been so affirming to me, but I never, you know, I needed to do the neutral statement first. So it just depends on where you're at. If you already have pretty neutral thoughts, then it would be, you know, just the next step to go to positive. But if you're thinking pretty negatively a lot, having neutral statements that just validate where you are coming from but also don't make it feel like the end of the world. Um, that's been really helpful. And then last, fun as a priority. I cannot really tell you too much about this. I'm on the beginning of my fun journey. Um, I've been working on implementing joy and things that I enjoy for the past maybe year. So I'm still, I'm still tweaking it. I'm still experimenting, but I realized at a certain point that when I do have time to do things that I enjoy, when I do make space for um, happiness, basically, that has a big, big impact on my mental health. And I used to be one of those people that would say, I can't afford to do anything fun or I don't have the time to do anything fun. There was almost like a pride in it. Like I have five kids. I don't have any time to do some stuff that's fun. And I think women in particular do kind of pride themselves on how hard they work and how, how much they sacrifice at times. And I think that that's just not helpful. Um, that may not resonate with you, but if you're like the, like hundreds of people who have contacted me when I've said, are you having fun? Do you do anything fun? Do you have a hobby? They contact me and say, no, I, I don't remember the last time I did anything fun or took time for myself. Um, I would encourage you to definitely just think about it. Just be a little bit curious. You don't need a lot of time. You don't need a lot of money. It doesn't have to be extravagant in any way, but you know, fun is there's fun out there and it is something that you deserve. You deserve to have a quality of life that is, um, includes putting a smile on your face. So, okay. That's all. <laughs> so look, 